Hello you guys, welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. For those of you that don't already know me, my name is Brittany. If you're new here, feel free to leave a like, drop a comment, consider subscribing because it'd be really cool and it'd help me out quite a lot. Don't be afraid to hit that little notification bell to be notified every single time that I post because it is very rarely, if ever, I've just been a really busy person. So for today's video, I wanted to talk about um, pretty much just accommodations that you can make for yourself as a person with postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome or POTS for short. Any and all information that I provide you about the conditions that I go over in my videos is completely my own advice. I am not a doctor, I am not a healthcare professional in any way, shape or form. I am just a patient who is sharing their own experiences um, with said illnesses, disabilities. Uh, I'm just a patient who is giving their own advice as a patient and not as a medical professional. So the main things that help me personally as a POTS patient, uh, main thing is one of these. So one of these water bottles um, that just has like these labels. I had another one, but I lost it in the move where it would have like times of the day so it would say like 9 a.m 12 p.m uh one, you know it would just go through different times throughout the day and it would have the measurements for how much water and it would basically give you a recommendation of how much you should try to drink by each time so that way you know if you have this sitting here you're working on your computer you're doing whatever you glance over at it you see oh it's whatever time and i'm only up here let me just drink down to here and it isn't a whole lot either i think like between two three hours like the difference was like this basically um, but it's just a really good way to help you have visual cues, visual reminders, um, to help hydrate yourself. Um, especially considering there's a big link between people with POTS and people who are neurodivergent. And what comes with being neurodivergent is tending to forget things when, you know, it's kind of like out of sight, out of mind. Um, so yeah, something like this just really, really helps for you to be able to maintain your, um, hydration, which is a huge, huge, uh, factor with POTS. In terms of hydration, that leads me into the next thing, which would be electrolytes. So really, electrolytes is just, you know, as long as you're getting electrolytes. Um, a lot of people have concerns about sugars and different electrolyte company brands. And then, like, if it's not the sugar, then it's whatever they're using as substitute for sugar. Um, then there's also the concern about, say, too much uh, vitamin, you know, too much vitamins. Like, I know there was a concern for a while with a lot of patients who are having, I think, kidney issues from the excessive amount of vitamin B that they were taking in from um, liquid IV and a few other electrolytes. So you do have to worry about, for one of the hydration, you have to worry about getting overhydrated, which is again, why stuff like this is good because you can help prevent water intoxication being overhydrated by, you know, seeing your limits as to how much you should be drinking around what times. But also you can have too much electrolytes. So you can, experience nausea, headaches, vomiting, diarrhea uh, from having excessive water intake or excessive electrolyte intake, which is why it's really necessary that we have more studies done um, and a lot more education on POTS and dysautonomia as a whole and a lot of these invisible disabilities because there's not a whole lot of guidelines when it comes to things like this. And it really is serious because you can actually harm your body by just not knowing how much electrolytes you need or how much water you need, how much salt you need, um, and all of that. So the next thing would be salt. Salt is technically included in the electrolytes, um, but a lot of people tend with POTS tend to need even more salt than what's in those electrolyte packets. So for me personally, I take probably two liquid IVs each day. That's just my preferred um, electrolyte choice. I know a lot of people don't like liquid IV. It's like way too salty for them. Other people just don't like how much sugar's in it. But for me and my needs personally, liquid IV is just, it checks all the, all the boxes for me. Um, see, I, I, for me and my needs personally, I find that two packets each day work. And the best advice I can give for finding out how much electrolytes you need each day is I would just start with one packet each day of electrolytes. And if you like experience like nausea, headaches that aren't normal for you, like diarrhea, then I would definitely just not do one packet every day, you know, just... Depending on the symptoms, if you Im notice an improvement in your POT symptoms with just one packet, you know, stick with one packet, you know, you don't have any adverse stuff. Um, personally, with one packet, it wasn't enough to help with my POT symptoms, so I would have one packet in the morning and then one packet at night or towards the evening, and that seems to most control, um, better control my POT symptoms for me personally. But again, it really is just trial and error. You just gotta adjust, you know, kind of tweak your water intake tweak your electrolyte intake and find that, you know, happy ground. But 
that's not to say that it'll always work because if you get sick if you you know have any little thing that's a significant enough change to cause you to have a flare-up you might find that your usual balance of electrolytes and water and all that isn't cutting it isn't working and that's not uncommon um, just give yourself time give yourself grace and the flare should hopefully go away and you should be able to go back to your usual uh, accommodations now the next thing would be compression stockings or really just compression garments in general um these were fairly cheap i needed them in a pinch so i did order them off of amazon um i think a few months ago and these came in a pack with other neutral colors it was black gray and like a beige. I think that I'm, I'm gonna try and find the link. If I can find the link, I'll link them in the description below. It's not sponsored or anything, but it is, if you're in a pinch and you need something quick, then they're pretty cheap. I think they were like, I want to say no more than 20 bucks for a pair of like, or a pack of like six of them, I want to say. I think there was two of each color of the black, the gray, and the like beige color. But yeah, compression garments. That's not just compression socks. Um, some people have actually found an improvement with their pot symptoms by using things like corsets. So compression garments, you know, bodices, full bodices, um, and then plus, you know, go compression garments that, uh, what are those things called? Like the Spanx, I think is what they're called, where it sort of pulls in your stomach and your pelvis and it kind of squeezes your butt and your thighs and all that too. Like pretty much anything that squeezes your body and is tight fitting without causing harm without restricting blood flow, without restricting airflow, all of that, of course. But all these restrictive clothing seem to really, really help with many people's POT symptoms. And a lot of that has to do with what we call blood pooling. So many people with POTS, um, when they change that posture, which is why it's called postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, they tend to get that tachycardia from the change in posture. And that tends to be because all of the blood that when you're laying here is evenly distributed is then sinking as it does with gravity. So effectively, we're allergic to gravity if you, if you think about it. But this, if you if you have these uh, compression garments, they will help reduce that blood pooling because it will help squeeze and help keep everything there, and it will make the blood have to sort of work harder in order to pull straight down to your feet, causing you know loss of consciousness from the loss of blood flow to your brain. So that's how compression uh, garments in general, but even compression socks can help you quite a lot with your pot symptoms. Um, again, be very careful with this as well, because you don't, like I said, want to restrict blood flow, you don't want to restrict oxygen, um, and that can be really dangerous, so do be mindful of how you're feeling, you know, any tingling, numbness, don't want that, um, just, just be careful. As with every, every bit of advice, take it with a grain of salt, start slow, you know, work your way up, um, pay really close attention to what your body is telling you as you're trying new things to help accommodate you and your disability. The next thing, uh, is definitely... One of the harder things to implement as a POTS patient, and that is moderate exercise. Now, another slippery slope is the fact that damned if you do, damned if you don't. If you do just even a little bit too much exercise, you're f making your POTS worse, exponentially worse. But then if you just don't do any exercise at all, you're making your POTS exponentially worse. So the main form of exercise that works for me personally is just walking. Um, I'll just put my babies in the stroller and I will just walk, you know, around a trail that's stroller friendly, you know, in some woods or walk around the park, walk around my neighborhood, um, you know, just regular walking, nothing fast, no speed walking, just regular walking, you know, just some sort of movement. And if I'm not doing that, then it's because I'm moving around my house, you know, if I'm running around doing laundry, doing dishes, do if I'm getting plenty of movement activity, that's enough. You just need some sort of movement. Even if it's just walking around getting your chores done. The next thing that really helps as a pos pa POTS patient is mobility aids. So I'm not going to turn my camera around because I set it up and I think, I hope I've been in frame this whole time, I swear. But yeah, my wheelchair is right here. I am an ambulatory wheelchair user, not just because of my POTS, but because of my other disabilities as well, which I will make or have already made videos on in the future if you're interested in seeing them. Um, I had my first hip surgery when I was 13. So I experienced severe chronic pain in that hip, um, and plus my POTS. I am a fall risk for many reasons, so I am an ambulatory wheelchair user. I don't use it often, but when I do need to, it is there. It doesn't have to be a wheelchair, you know, um, a roller, uh, walkers, crutches, cane, whatever helps alleviate your POTS symptoms, don't be afraid or ashamed to use it. If you are questioning whether or not you need to use 
a mobility aid, the odds are you need to use a mobility aid because able-bodied people don't go around wondering whether or not they should use a mobility aid. They just don't. Like, able-bodied people don't genuinely question and ponder whether or not a mobility aid would better their life and their quality of life. If you were questioning whether or not a mobility aid would better your quality of life and help you get around and complete your day-to-day -day needs, then you have your answer. <laughs> Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Well, especially being an ambulatory wheelchair user, or not just wheelchair user, ambulatory mob mobility aid user, there is a whole lot of stigma around being an ambulatory mobility aid user. I mean, they see you stand up from your wheelchair once in public and it's like they've seen Jesus walk on fucking water. I mean, it's like they've witnessed a miracle and they you can see it in their face. They're not very shy about it. I don't know, people just don't realize how they look at other people, but yeah, you, you notice, you notice. I, I know that you notice as a disabled person, um, but don't let it get to you because at the end of the day, you're doing what you need to do to get by, to survive. And so where's that person who's judging you, so. But yeah, that is pretty much all of the accommodations that I use the most throughout my day-to-day -day life that help me exponentially with my pots. So that is the compression garments, um, that is the salt, the electrolytes, the water, um, pretty much regulating those things, especially safely. Um, and then my mobility aids, of course. There are other things such as medication, which can help manage pot symptoms. Um, I sort of save that for last because, in my opinion, um, along with mobility aids, they are the two least accessible forms of help when it comes to POTS. Because if you don't have access to healthcare, which as an American, um, I currently do not, um, I had access to healthcare when I got diagnosed and all of that, when I originally got my wheelchair, because I was privileged enough to have the access at that time, but... Many people don't have access to those things, so last but not least is definitely medication. Things like beta blockers, which are um, heart medications that basically help lower your autonomic um, responses. So it lowers your breathing, it lowers your heart rate, and the issue with these medications can be if you have a history of respiratory illness. So I have history of asthma. I was born with asthma, um, and I never grew out of it, so to speak. I still suffer from asthma. When I was on beta blockers, I noticed I had a really hard time breathing, so they tried me on different beta blockers, some that were supposed to be asthma friendly and supposed to not affect your breathing, and I still, it, it still, I was having asthma attacks all of a sudden when I hadn't for years, I wasn't noticing any, imp I noticed improvement in my POT symptoms, definitely, and my heart rate was like normal, I had a resting heart rate of 70 instead of 100, so that was insane, um, I didn't, feel dizzy when I stood up. I The only reason I felt dizzy was because it did lower my blood pressure a bit too much, um, but it really made it hard for me to breathe. So those two things were just not safe, um, so I couldn't continue beta blockers. So that's another way that they are just not accessible for all people, is the fact that they can't work for all people. I mean, they worked, but they caused other side effects and issues with my health that out those risks outweighed the benefits, you know? So yeah, that is pretty much the majority of the more important um, accommodations for POTS. Without making the video super long, there are plenty more accommodations that you can make for yourself as a POTS patient. If y'all are interested in more, um, just let me know in the comments below and I am more than happy to make more videos about more, um, more niche, more specific accommodations that aren't the typical ones that you think of, which are the ones that I presented in this video today. If y'all are interested in more disability comp content, Please like, subscribe, comment for more. Go check out my TikTok for shorter, more easy to digest videos relating to disability content and trauma related content. Um, my TikTok, I will link down below, but my username on TikTok is my name here on YouTube. Um, pretty much the same name across all platforms. So you can find me on every platform pretty much. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope it helped you out. Leave a like, drop a comment, consider subscribing because it'd be really cool and it helped me out quite a lot. And I hope you guys have an amazing rest of your day. And remember, if you can't be good, Bitch, you better be good at it. Love you.